What's up, what's up, everybody? It's your boy NAPPR. Hey. Welcome to my channel. On today's episode, I'm going to show you where the first Ghanaian president was working. All right, so guys, I'm here with um, Aram Dela and uh, and now the vlogs, the guy with the food. <laughs> so Aram Dela, today he's going to show me the museum, and he's going to be our tour guy because he has been there before. Not yet. Not yet. It's my first time. Man. It's also my first time actually, sir. So we are going to be each other's tour guy. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to happen live inside the Kwame Nkrumah Museum, the first president of Ghana, the yep, first prime yep, minister of yep, Ghana. Yep, yep, yep. And guys, watch out for something big. Like we are all equipped here. This is for Aram 75, uh, 750 D. This is so big, man. It's heavy. I'm going to try this. Oh, I'm going to vlog with this. So what do you have to tell them, guys? So guys, you guys should keep tuned. We get something. We get ready for us. We are going to give you great content. So stay tuned. Nana, what do you have to tell them? Charlie, expect amazing stuff. We are going to learn more about Ghana's first president. I learned his car is parked somewhere there. Me, I want to drive the car away. So <laughs> <laughs> That's what I expect me driving the first president's car away. Alright, okay. so guys, I think what should we use? Uber, Trotro? Uber, 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 Uber. Uber. Since we are promoting Ghana, let's go with Trotro. <laughs> that is it. <laughs> I agree with you, man. <laughs> let's go and get a Trotro from the other side. Come with us, let's go. Yo, guys, so I'm in the museum right now. Um, so you need to pay at the gate. Sorry, I couldn't film from the gates. My camera was low. Sorry, guys. I was looking for my battery, my extra battery, but I didn't find it. It says adults, like a local. If you're a local and you're an adult, you pay three Ghana cities. And if you are a teenager, you pay two Ghana cities. And if you are a foreigner, you pay 10 Ghana cities, like foreigner adults, like adults and you're a foreigner. You pay 10 Ghana cities. And if you are um, a teenager and you're a foreigner, you pay 5 Ghana cities. So that's cool. Like, yeah, it's cool. It's cool. So I'm here and oh, there's no tour guide here to take me around. So, guys, I'm really sorry about this. So I'll just film around, just give you some B rolls. And when I meet something that I talk about, I'll do that. So, this is how the tickets looks like. Yeah. Just to get inside here. The lies. What, what is he doing? Like, look at him. Are, are you surfing the internet? No. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted, I wanted a tour guy, but I can't find one. So anywhere we get to, and we can say something like something we learned from school, I'll just talk about it. So we are out here at the Kwame Nkrumah Museum. Come with me. Let's explore. get your ticket walk straight down there so when I came here the first time when I came here the first time I didn't know where the tour guides were until I was told I should enter a room down there like after I paid for the tour and I got my ticket so I walked down there and the tour guide came to take me around so like I'm with him right now and I'll show you around again once again we'll go around and he was going to tell me everything here and I hope you guys will enjoy the scene Charlie and come did a good job. The bronze statue of Nkoma, you can get a very good view out here. So you have Nkuma with his finger pointing that way and you might wonder why he has his finger pointing that way or the symbolism behind that. Now the message with that is that we look neither to the east nor to the west, we move forward. That's the little message that comes with the statue here. And also in a way to further declare um, his position of being non-aligned, even though Americans actually thought against that. So he's a 
cares that whether we are facing east, whether we are facing west, it is relevant unless we are moving forward. And so out here, um, we call this place the old polo grounds. And then you must have read online that the woman made the declaration of the old polo grounds, old polo grounds. Now this whole park, before its creation, um, was a recreational place for the British. This is where they played polo all around. Yes. And so um, on 6th March 1957, Mpuma strategically chose this place to come out and then speak to the people to declare independence from the Gold Coast at that time. And the symbolism was that um, it was only to show that we had actually regained our land from the whites. Actually, this was a no-go area for black people. Okay. This whole area was forbidden for black people in China. So that's the symbolism. Yeah. <laughs> so on this side, I'll take you there and then I'll show you the meaning of the statues we have. Yeah. And then we come back to the car in the glass house there. You want to drive it out? <laughs> All right. Does it work? Um, I'm not sure. So um, here you have um, a bunch of men on the sides down on one knee holding horns in their mouths. Now we call these guys the horn blowers. Yes, the horn blowers. Now, what they are doing basically is very simple. They are actually announcing the death of Nkrumah to the rest of the world. Oh, so, yeah. oh. We just have one objective. Oh. That's what they are doing. Now you find them kneeling down on oh. one knee. Actually, they are not proposing to any woman here. <laughs> <laughs> They are only um, emphasizing the relevance of water down below. That's how come you find them. And then when you look at the far corner there, you see two images there. You see one with his cloth lowered to his waist, where the lady is standing there yes. on the left side, with two big drums in front. Yeah. And then you find one in a smock with a traditional guitar just around his neck. Now, if you would agree with me that drumming used to be a form of communication back in the days you will understand that that man there is playing a very important role in that he is also communicating about the death of Nkrumah just like what these um, horn blowers are equally doing now in doing so he's representing the culture of the southern part of the country down south here everybody was I mean a cloth whether you are a Ghan, whether you are a Volterian whether you are a Fanti whatever whatever wear cloths down south you have a trauma over there with this that's also um, indicating which part of the country he's coming from even though at times you find him wearing a smock that is only to signify that as the leader of the of the nation you have to um, try to seek to unify both sides so on that far end the man there is also performing the same function but in doing so, he's representing the culture of the north. So basically, you have like the north and the south coming together to bid and form a farewell, basically. The structures we have. Together with this, he had a Rolls Royce too. And um, unfortunately, we don't have that one here at the park. But I've been told that one is at the National Museum, but you know, it's undergoing some rehab, so it won't be open to the public for some time. But I know very well that when he was overthrown, um, the window, one side, was smashed by some angry people who decided to just rip him off history like that. So, this is what we have here at the park. And you can see in the far end there, that small cylindrical pole there, that's where we used to mount the flag. Yeah. So this is a 60s Cadillac and it was very common back in the days. You have Sikutuya also having one like this. And then Nambi Azikri of Nigeria also had one like this. But that was very white. It was very popular back in the days. The third and final place that Nkrumah has been buried. 
first in Guinea in May 1972, next in Crawford, July 1972. Take and then while yeah, his body was embalmed and taken there, by him. the park had not been built until 91 when J.J. Rollins secured funds to put up this place. And so finally, Nkrumah's, um, excuse me to say, decaying body was finally brought in here. So he was taken off the metallic casket because in spite of the fact that he had been embalmed, there were still signs of decay on his body. So a wooden one was designed, it was placed inside that one, and finally buried here. So we call this place the mausoleum. Yeah, it was purposely built to keep the remains of Ghana's first president. So another important fact also is that um, while Nkrumah was being brought here, and his wife, Fatia, she made a wish that when it was time for her to also join her maker, she would like to be buried next to her husband. And so Fatia died after a short illness in Cairo, Egypt. And so the family also facilitated the movement of her body from Egypt to Ghana in 2007. And we have Fatia's body buried also in the corner there where I'll take it. Yo guys, if you really enjoyed this episode, you see these guys out here, like they, they are so wonderful, like to the world, Ghana to the world, Africa to the world, these guys are so wonderful. Don't, so, don't forget to yes. smash that red button. Like hit it, 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 hit it. It's free, you know. It's free, it's, it's free, free. Subscribe, you don't oh. pay to subscribe. So when you subscribe, please don't forget to hit the bell to get a notification anytime I post a video. Guys, catch you in another episode. Peace out. Sally.